you know, the brain itself feels no pain, so it won't feel a thing. Congressman, thank you so much for being on the program. I love your background. Look at that awesome colonial flag. Yes, awesome, bad face. Um, you are yourself a veteran. You yourself served. Um, I I haven't served. I got I got, I got multiple members of my family have been in the military. It's called it's called stolen valor, right? When you like when when you like ascribe when Do when Joe Biden ascribes to his son's death like he died in Iraq like he said that a bunch of times my son died in Iraq that's a lie I mean right it's like demon it's a demonstrable provable lie okay oh, doesn't make it not a tragedy but like that's a bad thing to do right like from a military perspective well I would say under normal circumstances Benny yes that's an absolute lie but we have to ask ourselves at this particular point does Joe Biden really think that his son died in, in Iraq who knows I mean we don't know if uh, if the man's lying to us anymore or if he just completely confused and lost I mean he he talks to dead people for crying out loud I mean you know this guy's always talking about somebody that he just had a conversation with that died 15 <laughs> 20 years ago so it's hard to say anymore what's going on with uh, with Joe Biden but uh uh, he, he's an absolute mess. And like you said, you know, I, I took care of three presidents and you know, I was uh, in the White House for 14 years with Bush, Obama and Trump. Uh, that was my that was my full time job was to the health and well-being of uh, the commander in chief of the president. And, uh, you know, while I was in the uh, Obama White House, uh, I was in and around Joe Biden on a regular basis in the West Wing. And I saw him pretty much every day in some capacity. And what I can tell you is that he is he, he's always been kind of, I would say, He's always been stupid in my book, right? But now he's stupid and demented, right? He's, 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 he's cognitively impaired now, which is different. But if you go back and you look at the video from him when he was vice president uh, or even you know before that, compared to what we see now, drastic, drastic change. I mean, this man is not the same person. He is, he, he's gone through this process that we all know well, and you don't have to be a former White House physician. You don't even have to be a physician to recognize this because we've all had family members that have gone through this process and we can see it. The physical symptoms, the, the cognitive issues, you know, the shuffle when he walks, the slur in his speech, the, uh, the, the blank uh, thousand yard stare, uh, the dark stare, the, uh, you know, uh, all, all the physical things that go along with, you know, the forgetfulness. He doesn't know where he's at, what he's doing, uh, you know, even what office he's holding sometime. Uh, we've all seen this and it's 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 sad, but, you know, it's something that uh, that happens to some people. It doesn't happen to other people. It's not really age related. I mean, it's it's associated with age. But, you know, we all know people that are in their 60s that, you know, that, that have this stuff, uh, you know, early. And we know people that are 100 years old that are sharp as a tack. And we know mm -hmm. people that never get anything like this. They go to their grave, uh, you know, completely mentally intact. Uh, but unfortunately, it's happened to Joe Biden. And the most unfortunate thing is he's our president. He's our commander in chief. He's our head of state. And that is not a good thing. So no, it's not a good thing, but we are all observing it from the outside. You've seen it from the inside, you know, Barack Obama, who you were close with actually, um, would regularly uh, talk Joe Biden. I mean, there's no other way to say it. Like he's on the record multiple times. I mean, like Joe will F things up. Like Joe Biden doesn't have, doesn't have it. The reason why he didn't want Joe to run for president and leveraged according to multiple sources so heavily for Joe to not run for president in 2016. Yeah was because Joe Biden was mentally uh, incapacitated. And so well, this has just got to be a rough road, man. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're absolutely right. I mean, I do know uh, just from conversations I've overheard, you know, uh, uh, in and around the White House during my eight years there, uh, you know, with uh, senior staff and everybody else. I, I don't think that that uh, President Obama really had a lot of respect for Joe Biden. I, I really don't think. I think he also thought that that he was probably too dumb to do the job. Uh, and I think that I know for a fact that Joe Biden was very interested in running the time before whenever Hillary Clinton was also, uh, you know, competing for the Democrat, uh, you know, spot on the ticket. And I think that uh, President Obama was key in, in pushing him out and pushing her in. Uh, and he probably thought that, well, she was going to get elected and Joe Biden would go away and never be considered again. But unfortunately uh, for uh, for them. Uh, what happened was uh, President Trump got reelected, fortunately for us, and uh, Joe Biden got another shot at it. And by that time, I mean, he was he was, he was really not just, you know, uh, I would say, you know, less, you know, of, of less than average intelligence, but he was also cognitively compromised and cognitively, uh, you know, injured. And so here we are. Did you ever get a chance to do an assessment on Joe Biden? You were the White House physician. Is that something that happens? 
Nope, I didn't. And I'm, I'm glad that I didn't at this particular point. I was not his physician. The doctor that worked for him worked for me. So I oversaw his medical care, but I never got involved in his medical care. I never examined him and I never handled his medical records or anything like that. So I feel free that I can, if I had, I would be a lot more restrained about talking about some of this stuff, but he was not my patient, uh, mm -hmm. just to be clear. Uh, but I'm, I'm speaking as an outsider looking in. I've, I've gone out of my way to, to say, I'm not giving this guy a diagnosis. I'm not trying to make a diagnosis from a different from a distance. Uh, but look, you know, this, this could be multi infarct dementia. It could be Alzheimer's. It could be Parkinson's. There's a variety of, of illnesses out there that manifest with this cognitive impairment. I don't know what it is. Uh, his doctor probably knows he's not going to share that with us. He's part of the cover up. But the reality is, is that the natural history of every one of these diseases is they get worse with time, not better. And I've said from the very beginning, Joe Biden is not a fine wine. This is not going to get any better. This is going to continue to get worse and worse. Uh, and I think we're at the point now where I think it's it's kind of reached a it's kind of reached, you know, a critical a critical point where even the Democrats are looking around and going, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do now? We're stuck with this guy's our nominee. What are, so I think, you know, Benny, my, my personal opinion is that the fact that that language is included in the her report in the special counsel's report coming from the Biden DOJ. I think that there are people within the party, uh, part of the press, progressive liberals, some probably that work in the West Wing of the White House that basically knew this was going to happen and let it happen because they're looking for an exit ramp for this guy. Mm -hmm. they're, they've tried to, I'm sure they've tried to talk him into resigning at some point. They're, they're also terrified that she, that Kamala Harris is gonna become the president. So it's a lose-lose for them. I think she's his biggest insurance policy. The fact that she's there, their party looks around and they're like, well, look, we, we gotta get rid of this guy, but the alternative is just unacceptable, right? So I think they're trying to figure out how to get both, of, get rid of both of them at some point. But uh, he, he's looking less and less. He's like he's going to make it to the, uh, you know, to to the end of this term, and that they're going to they're going to be able to just keep him in the basement and uh, and try to keep him as their nominee. So I, I think they're getting rid of him. I think. So you you said that you you use the words Joe Biden is demented, right? Does that mean yeah. dementia? Can you talk us through like cl like clinically? your best assessment of what's going on right now? Well, I just mean that he had, he has, he has uh, some sort of cognitive, serious cognitive impairment, you know, dementia is part of that. And uh, it's, it's, it's a broad category. So yeah, I think he has some sort of cognitive dementia. Right. Uh, and I think that's why he, he thinks that, you know, he just, he had conversations with dead world leaders. Uh, that's why he doesn't know where he's at sometimes. Uh, that's why he can't find his way off stage. Uh, it's why he, he slurs his speech and, uh, you know, all these other things that we see. I mean, like I said, every person in this country has seen somebody that's important to them or somebody that they know well go through this process. And so when I say these things, people know it to be true. And, you know, I've been saying it for three and a half years when he was candidate Joe Biden, I was saying it. I've been saying it every, you know, every time I'm on TV since then for over three years now. And the, the rest of the, the country is waking up to this. They're mm -hmm. starting to to admit to this. We have the her report come out now that's, uh, you know, from a completely different source, from an objective source, from the DOJ, from his DOJ that puts this in writing, you know, that right, that, that, that basically says what everybody else has been thinking. And then he gets on TV and he tries to, uh, you know, convince everybody that there's no uh, substance to that her report and that it's completely, uh, you know, it's completely inaccurate. And what does he do? He just reinforces with with what he says that it's that that it's absolutely the case. So I, we we've passed critical mass here. Okay, scre yes, screaming, raging at the press, yeah. mixing All up world. Things. Mixing up those, world those, leaders. Yeah, that's exactly right. Th th those things go along with the cognitive impairment as well, right? I mean, he, he realizes deep down inside that he's lost control and then he doesn't know what's going on. And so that's a defensive mechanism when he strikes out at other people, when he when he yells at reporters and when he uh, apparently when he yells at his staff and stuff all the time. These are defensive yes. mechanisms because he feels himself losing grip on reality. So there are a number of clips that I had my producers pull for the show and i really wanted to sort of laser focus in on you saying that joe biden is not a fine wine you're right joe biden is aging like a box of franzia merlot uh that's stuck in a uh non-working refrigerator in your aunt's uh detached garage but joe biden did go to a brewery recently not sure if joe biden sampled any of the beers but he did sound like this when he was there the beer brewed here <laughs> it is used to make the brew beer in this final Oh, Earth Rider, thanks for the Great Lakes. I wonder why. If Joe Biden walked into your 
uh, assessment table in, in your clinic and your exam room. And he start, he was sounding like that in a, in a, in a medical setting. Like what would, what would you think? Well, I wouldn't let him leave the exam room until I knew that he had somebody with him that was going to make sure he got home. Okay. All right. I mean, you know, I would make sure that he had a chaperone, somebody with him to, you know, uh, that he didn't, didn't just wander off and, uh, you know, we'd have to call the police to try to figure out where he went. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's bad. And, and, you know, Benny, our, our adversaries overseas, they see this too, right? Our allies that are supposed to depend on us, you know, that, that they're supposed to work with us on, on big issues overseas. They see this as well. They don't have any confidence in us as allies. Our adversaries see this as a moment of weakness, uh, as a window of opportunity for them to do bad things to our country. That's why you see that, that that's the whole reason. I mean, if it hadn't been for his incompetence and some of the Afghanistan stuff that, that started this all and everything that he said and done since then, Putin would have never went into Ukraine, right? Iran wouldn't be, you know, spending billions and billions of dollars on these proxies to attack U.S. troops and the shipping lanes. Uh, that, that are important to us. We wouldn't have what's going on in Israel. Hamas would have never done what they what they what, what they did. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to have an issue, I'm sure, at some point in the near future with uh, Xi and with uh, in, in the Indo-Pacific with China and Taiwan. That's all. These are, things are all results of Biden weakness, Biden incompetence. And then it's complicated by the fact today. I was just somebody asked me the other day, like, well, you know, look, we we all worried that this man doesn't know what he's doing, and he's you know supposedly got the nuclear codes and this that, and the other. But they're like, you were at the White House for 14 years. There's checks and balances in place, right? So that if something bad happens, he doesn't accidentally you know do something that that, that takes us into a war. And I said, yeah, there are some checks and balances in place, right? But you you look at it's the people that surround him. First and foremost, his Secretary of Defense, who was in the hospital for days and days and never even bothered to tell anybody. Nobody knew where he was at, and he was completely off the grid and unavailable. We didn't even know it. And Biden's team didn't even know it. Right now he's back in the hospital again. So we have a we have a perfect storm right now where we have an incompetent administration. Right. And we have a completely uh, cognitively impaired commander in chief and head of state. Something bad's going to happen. And not to mention the fact that we're a setup right now for a terror attack in this country because of mm -hmm. his open border policy and all the jihadi terrorists that have crossed our border uh, since he's come into office. There are, there are scary national security issues on the horizon for this country right now, and we have no one at the helm to make sure that we get out of this. Uh, that is terrifying. What 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 isn't so terrifying is this incredible uh, tweet that you sent out in front of a Taco Bell uh, cool. with you inviting Joe Biden to eat at some Egyptian food in your district. Um, this is hysterical. But also, but also chilling, and also as a Texan, this border issue with Joe Biden has got to like, has got to ring like a bell. Pardon the pun here, um, because this has the potential to change Texas forever, to destroy one of the best states in America. Um, your thought on its effect on your district, and this has got to be personal for you. Well, it absolutely is. I mean, it's having a big impact on Texas. We're spending billions of our tax dollars, our state tax dollars on this, right? And, you know, but the thing here to remember, Benny, for all that, everybody in your audience, it's been painful for Texas for a while now. It's going to continue to, uh, to injure our state, but this is going to injure every state in the union. These people are, these people, a lot of them aren't staying in Texas. They're going elsewhere. We mm -hmm. personally here in Texas are trying to encourage them. Why don't you go to a sanctuary state? You know, why don't you mm -hmm. go up to New York or Chicago or somewhere? They love, they apparently love you there. They're going to give you free education, free health care. They're going to give you cash cards to carry around, you know, ATM cards that you can get, get money for. So I, I want these people to leave if they come here. I don't want them to come here in the first place, but they need to go elsewhere and they need to go where, where they're welcome. Because to be honest with you, I'm all about immigration, but these people aren't welcome here because they didn't come here the right way. And they're falling in on resources, specifically right now, state resources that are in place for state taxpayers here, for federal taxpayers, you know, with regards to our education system, our roads, our health care, our welfare system, our housing opportunities. These are for people that pay taxes, not for anybody and everybody in the entire world that just wants to, you know, uh, uh, that wants to take advantage of it and have a better way of life. We can't be the answer for every. There's poor people all over this planet. There's always been poor people all over this planet, but they're all coming here now because we're given a handout, but that's only going to last for a certain amount of time. We do not have an endless pot of money in this country and people in this country are about to find that out the hard way. Yeah. I, I like really, truly, it, it's, it does seem as though there's this generation of people that just are like, 
you know, screw it, Leroy Jenkins. Like, we're not going to be around. We're 85. Right. We're in our 80. Like, none of these policies are going to affect us. We just got to make sure that our families can cash out, right? My grandkids will be good. They'll have whatever set up trust for them, and then we're done. Yeah, you know, the, the place can burn. Yeah. And Mitch McConnell seems to be like that. Klaus what? Schwab, like all these guys, like they, it's it's so fatalistic, nihilistic. It's 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 awful. You're absolutely right. And the reason this is happening, Benny, is because you you hit right on it. With it's it's the progressive left, the, these liberal progressives, right? The the Democrat Party has evolved into this thing that used to be would wouldn't be recognizable to Democrats 20 years ago, right? They used to represent hardworking blue collar people. They don't have those people anymore. Blue blue yes. collar hardworking people belong to the Republican Party now. Yes. Every single day, the, you know, more and more African Americans, more and more Hispanics are, are moving over yes. uh, because they fall into that category of hardworking American people Young that people. belong to the Republican Party, young people, Trump's, right? Trump's and winning young people, Congressman. It's crazy, right? So what you have right now is the Democrats are made up of two groups of people, the liberal elites and the welfare class. And that's it. There's nothing in between. And they're trying to grow that welfare class as big as they can because if they, bring, you know, they're bringing these people over. They don't even let them work, right? They're not even allowed to work, right? So I'm not, I don't want them coming over here in the first place. I don't want them working here, but that's part of the deal. They bring them over here and they don't let them work. Why? Because they don't want them to work. They want to give them housing. They want to give them education. They want to give them health care. They want to give them money to spend. They want to be completely dependent on the U.S. government so that whenever they do get the right to vote, which they have a plan for that to be coming down the pike pretty soon, they have to vote as Democrats to keep all of the privileges and all of the benefits that they're getting right now. So the party is going to be the haves and the have-nots and the, the, the progressive liberal elites don't care because they're lining their pockets with taxpayer dollars every single day, whether it's the Green New Deal or all the other corrupt stuff that's been going on in this party. And so we are in a bad situation right now. And, and, and I would say that some of the ones you mentioned, like Mitch McConnell, some of the rhino Republicans, especially on the Senate side, are in the same category. Mm, yes, a new political underclass is what they wish to create yes. where they are effectively you've created effectively a feudal system there is one man that my final question for you congressman and i deeply appreciate your time and your your effort explaining this to us and our audience it's great to have a professional on here we can simply observe you've actually been in the room somebody who's also been in the room with a lot of these people are hillary clinton we just played a clip on the show where hillary is like yeah um biden's mental capacity is a concern and then she of course dovetails in but so is trump's Right. And so as a man who I believe gave Donald Trump a cognitive test, and who's quite close with Donald Trump, two of you seem to be good pals. Um, can you fill in Hillary Clinton as to Donald Trump's mental and cognitive state? Look, Hillary Clinton and all of, all of the left, they know they know that he's uh, that he's, he's he's very intelligent. He's completely competent. He scares the crap out of them. I mean, he scares them to death because he's the one man, the one man that's smart enough and motivated enough to get back in there and to disassemble what they're putting together. He will take it down and they know it. We know it. The American people know it. He's going to win as long as they're not cheating like they were last time. He's going to win. He's going to win overwhelmingly if there's not a lot of elect election fraud going on. And they are terrified of this man. But I'll tell you, he, the, it's anybody that watches him and try to compare him to, to Joe Biden, that's just laughable, right? President Trump has a better memory than I have. He has a better memory than you. I mean, he's got an incredible memory. It's one of his strongest points. He took the cognitive test. He got 30 out of 30. I talked to him all the time. He still can walk up to a bunch of cameras, a whole, to a whole uh, slew of press uh, without any indication whatsoever what they want to talk about. They can start asking him questions just off the cuff. He can stand there for two hours and answer questions all day long and never miss a beat. Joe Biden can't stand in front of a teleprompter for two minutes without saying something stupid, right? This is crazy. I mean, it's just, it's comparing apples and oranges in the biggest way. President Trump is fully qualified mentally and physically to be our commander in chief. He was the best president we've ever had, and he will be our 47th president, and we will clean this place up. It's going to happen. You said a 30 out of 30 for the mental competency test? That's absolutely right. So a perfect score. A perfect score. And and what would you just, I hate doing this, but what would you guess it's, Biden would get? I don't think Biden could get the first question right, which is to identify three animals, right? He, I don't think he could do that, right? <laughs> I don't think it would happen. <laughs> I think he's oh, lucky if he gets a three. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 30 for three. Uh, maybe if it maybe if it was identified three small children's heads you wish to sniff their hair. Sure. Maybe yeah. Joe Biden. Perfect score on that one. But maybe three, maybe three dead heads of state that he talked to last week. You might get that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Helmut Kohl, yeah, Mitterrand from 
from Germany. Yeah. You can't even get the name or right. the guy. Okay, so anyway, the president sees dead people. We are here for the living, and we are very thankful that you are living and in Congress. Congressman, keep fighting. Godspeed. Thank you, Benny. I appreciate it.